Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we're going to do some cute little birds for beginners. And it's very simple. We're going to be working wet on wet in a tear shaped fashion and dropping in some colors of your choice. I chose colors of a robin because it's a spring bird and I just love robins. <laughs> Let's get started. I'm gonna go through with you some tips and tricks I've learned along the way to make this process for you as easy as possible. One thing that you could do to make your birds consistent is cut out a tear-shaped bird like I did and then you can trace it on your piece of paper and you know depending on what size paper you're going to use and you know place your birds you can flip the template over so that you have some facing different directions so i'm just going to put one up here in the middle and just go through with you the wet on wet technique that i'm going to use now i am drawing this a little bit darker than I would naturally just so that you can actually see the shape here but when you draw it on your piece of paper you're going to actually want to go very light so that your pencil marks don't show up now when we're going to work wet on wet we're going to wet our shape first and I'm not going to do the beak I'm just going to wet where I'm actually going to put all the feathers of the bird which is just in this almost looks like a comma <laughs> or a tear shape and we're gonna take our time and get that nice and wet now you could use whatever color you'd like for this demonstration I think I'll switch up colors here I won't use a I'll use some blues and to keep things simple you can just use one color blue and you could mix a very watery mixture of your background color and then come in with a stronger mixture for the tail and the wings. So once this is nice and wet, which it is, now you can see that the paper is glistening. Okay, so that's the stage you want the paper to be at. And then I could come in here with a fairly light mixture of blue. Okay, and since it's wet, it's gonna spread. And notice that I could even lift up my paper When I put it in all these different directions, it's going to spread the way that I'm tilting the paper. So I'm taking my time with this. I have a lot of water on there. You can see the beads of water kind of pooling on the sides. So that's my base color. Now, if I was to go and mix my, my darker color right away and start trying to tap that in, it's gonna spread a lot and I won't get any definite um, strokes for the feathers. Now, that's okay. We could put a base color of the darker color along his little head and just kind of tap that in. So that's how you know that your paper is still really moist is because you will not get any definite brush strokes at this point. You'll just get a soft blending. So in order to get some definite brush strokes, we need to wait till our paper is not glistening quite so much. So notice how it's still pretty glistening. And you can keep testing that by moving the paint around, it's still pretty wet. So I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes before I go in with a really strong mixture to try to get some definition for the wings and the tail feathers. Now you can see as it's drying how feathered the edges are, where the darker color is. And that's the beautiful thing about wet on wet is that you get this really beautiful out of focus transitions. So I'm tilting my paper. I can see the sheen is still on my paper, but I could also tell that I don't have any 
water that's sitting on the top that's pulling on the edges anymore. So it is drying and I have the smallest amount of sheen. This is the perfect time to get some definition of color. So I'm going to come in with my darker blue, just a darker mixture here. You also want to make sure that you have a very thick mixture of paint and you have more pigment and less water. If you have too much water, you can risk making a bloom. And I'll actually make a bloom on purpose to show you guys what that looks like. So I just dabbed off my pigment on my paper towel here just to make sure that my brush is fairly dry. So that's a good tip for you. Just dab it off. And now I am coming in with that darker mixture. And as you can see, I am getting some definition of strokes here, especially in the tail part where it's uh, drier. And that's as much as I want to do. It's just a very simple little bird for the eye and the beak. I do have to wait for that to dry completely before I put in my beak and my eye otherwise it will get fuzzy like this along the edges and the eye will like it'll spread out and probably be too big it'll look a little weird i want a nice crisp eye you could potentially if you do want the beak kind of looking a little bit fuzzy like, like it's blending in with the bird you can do the beak at this point too so let me put that in and show you what that bleeding looks like So you notice that I have a little bit of bleeding along the edges there, which is actually kind of nice. But I will wait for him to dry completely before I put the eye in. Okay, and for the eye, I would use a very tiny detail brush, like very small tip brush. Or you could use the end of your brush. This one's fairly flat. And all you have to do is dip the end in and make his little eye. Now I want to show you what happens if your paper is too wet and we go in to try to make the wings and some, some detail like I was talking about. So I'm going to show you what a bloom looks like. I'm just going to wet the paper, I'll put down a wash here, nice wash. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit. You can see there's a glistening to the paper a teeny bit. But if I wait too long and then I come in to try to do some definition, but my brush is too wet, I have too much water on my brush, I could make what they call a cauliflower or a bloom. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I have a very wet brush just to tap in and you notice how I'm getting these hard edges and these blooms and how disruptive that is to the beautiful wash that I have going on. <laughs> so this is called a bloom. This is what can happen if you have too much moisture on your brush. More moisture on your brush and your paper's drying, that's what happens. So to prevent that, when you're doing his cute little wings, you want to make sure that you're using a very thick consistency of paint and you can even dab it off, dab off that extra moisture on a piece of paper towel. Then you won't make a bloom. Now my paper is very dry so I'm having hard edges here. So you can see that there is a balance that you have to kind of practice when is the best time to get in this color. Well, it's probably uh, 45 seconds ago when it was still kind of glistening. And instead of having a really wet brush, if I came in with this type of brush where there's not much moisture, I could have got some very fuzzy lines like that. So those are some things that you could practice. Now for our cute little bird, you can put him on a clothesline or on a branch like I did. So I do love to use script liner br brushes or rigger brushes. This one's super thick. It's actually a size eight and it's perfect for branches. It holds a lot of water 
and you could really get in there. And um, we still are going to put some cute little feet here, but you know, I try to hold my brush farther up so that you can have some more kind of organic looking lines. And then, of course, his cute little feet. I'm going to use the exact same blue that we've been using. And I'm just going to make him very illustrative quality. Tiny little feet for the branch. Now you can use a round brush to make foliage. I just happen to love these triangular brushes. I think they make beautiful petals and beautiful leaves. But I am going to show you, for simplicity's sake, that you could definitely use a round brush. And basically, you're just going to go with the shape of your brush. You could do lots more pressure. You'll have thicker leaves. Less pressure, you'll have thinner leaves. So I'll make a nice big fat one here. And then you pull up at the very end. I will show you what it looks like with a triangular brush, also known as a wedge brush. And we'll just do a couple more here. So you basically, you there's three edges to this. So there's so, the sides and then the, the very uh, bottom is uh, where you get a very triangular shape. So I like to use it on the sides and it holds a lot of water and it just makes really fun, beautiful leaves. So that is what we're going to do to make our cute and easy beginner level birds. So moving on to my composition, I have lightly traced out my templates where I want the birds. So like we did in the demonstration, we're going to wet our paper first. And I'm using buff titanium for the face area. And then I'm going to go straight into my sepia for the head of the bird and along the back of the bird. Mixing up some orange for the bird's belly, making some robins here. <laughs> so I'm tilting my paper, so that just kind of helps spread the paint a bit. Darker mixture of paint, and I'm putting in the bird's feathers. Now the reason why I'm able to go right in with a darker color is that my paper was not as saturated as the demo bird that I did. So the thicker mixture of paint is not blending in as much and I'm getting definition of feathers. Moving on to my second bird. Just to make things a little more interesting, I'm doing a whole background layer of the orange on this bird. Coming in with the sepia on the top for the bird's head. Now here's a tip for you. Notice that the outside edges of this bird is fuzzy compared to the first bird I did. When you drop in your paint, you don't have to go all the way to the edges. You can leave yourself a quarter inch diameter where you drop in the paint and it will spread to that border and it'll be nice and fuzzy. Then coming in with my darker brown to put in the wings and tail feathers. On to my baby bird. doing a combination of the brown and the orange.
Coming in with my darker mixture for the tail feathers and wing. Now I'm going to let my paper dry completely and I'm putting in the beaks and the eyes of these cute little birds. You can use a smaller brush, a detail brush for this part. And notice I'm just taking my time. Now I do want the birds sitting on some branches and just add some pops of color of some leaves in here. For this, I do love to use my wedge brush. I think it makes beautiful leaves and petals and I am going to put some greenery in. I'm using sap green for the leaves. Don't be afraid to turn around your painting in the direction that you need in order to get the foliage in. I'm going to go ahead with a very long, thick script liner brush and put in the branches. For this, I'm using neutral tint, which is a neutral gray color. Now, last but not least, they do need some little legs, so I'm using the same script liner brush and just putting in some very illustrative quality little feet on these cute birds. I'm running out of a branch for the baby bird to sit on. I didn't think it was very plausible that he's sitting on a leaf, and so I added another branch for him. If you enjoyed this tutorial on birds, you might want to check out my realistic robin tutorial that I have, and you can click on the link right here to check that out. And if you have any questions about the wet on wet technique, don't be shy. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.